All right, what's up, my athletes? That's right, Mr. Muscarella coming at you. In this video, we're gonna continue learning a little bit more about polynomial and evaluating them. And in this one, we're gonna take a look at the technique known as synthetic substitution. That's right, last video, we took a look at direct substitution where you just plug the number in and go. In this video, we are gonna take a look at synthetic substitution. Now, a couple things about synthetic substitution. When you use whatever, the, when you look at a polynomial, like on this one, my highest degree here is four. So that means when I look at those terms, I wanna have something to the fourth power, to the third power, to the second power, to the first power, and then a constant. A constant. So if I look here, like my constant right here is negative eight. I've got something to the first degree. Now I'm missing a term that's squared. So I don't have an x squared, but I do have a something to the third power. And of course we've got our term here to the fourth power. So when we do that, that's going to play into our setup of this equation. Now the first thing you're gonna do when you set this up, after you evaluate that, you're gonna draw kind of like a little upside down division bar. And whatever number they're being asked to evaluate, which in this case is two, we're gonna write that on the outside. And then each one of the terms that are given, I'm gonna take the coefficient, the number in front, and write down just the coefficient. So the coefficient is set up in front of negative x to the fourth is just negative one. So I'm gonna write that there. My coefficient in front of negative two x cubed is negative two. Now I'm missing an x squared term, so I have to put a zero in for a placeholder. And that's very important. If there's a term that is missing from the highest degree all the way down to the constant, you've got to put a zero in as a placeholder. So I put a zero in for my x squared term, and then I put a three in for my linear term, because that's three x, and then negative eight is my constant. So that is the setup. So the setup is super important, because you want to make sure that we do that. Now we did this problem last one. This was our last example. So we'll kind of tie this back into this here momentarily. So the first thing you're want, gonna wanna do is bring down that negative one. Now procedurally, you're gonna take the two and you're gonna multiply it by the number that is we just brought down, which in this case is negative one. So two times negative one, that's right, it is negative two. Now the next pair of numbers, negative two and two, negative two, you find yourself. Negative two plus negative two gives us negative four. Then again, we're gonna take that two on the outside and we're gonna multiply that by negative four. So two times negative four is negative eight. When I add up zero and negative eight, my sum is negative eight. Again, I'm gonna multiply two times negative eight. Their product gives me negative 16. Now, when I add up three with negative 16, the sum of those two values, three plus negative 16, gives me a total of negative 13. Now when I multiply two times negative 13, I get negative 26. When I find the sum of negative eight and negative 26, that sum is going to be negative 34. Now this value right here at the end, what? That negative 34, that is my answer. So it's like, boom, that's so cool. So when you're done, we don't just stop there and say, okay, put a little circle around, mm -mm. You write this down next, you write f of two equals negative 34 and that's it so that is the value of that function if i were to plug a two in the output value the answer that i would get would be negative 34. so if you think about that also from a coordinate point to negative 34 that'd be my input and output rolled in there together now on the previous example when we did that using direct substitution we came up with the same value so sometimes your teachers will ask you to use direct, sometimes they'll ask you to use synthetic, but you can always use one to check the other, to check the other. So those are gonna be some techniques and some options that you'll have as you go through this one. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at example number two here. Now, if you feel like you got it, you can go ahead and pause and come back and check to make sure that your mathematical writing is solid and that you are good to go, my friend. All right, for everybody else, let's go ahead and start rolling. Now again, we're given P of two. We've got to figure out what that is. So if I were to plug two in for all the X's, then we can figure out what our answer is. So we're gonna have two on the outside. We draw a little upside down division symbol there. And when our first coefficient is a three, because we have three X to the fourth power. Followed by a negative seven, followed by a negative five, followed by a nine, and lastly, we have a 10. So we have all the constants, coefficients, there from our fourth degree from our highest power of four all the way down to our constant so we have a fourth degree uh 
term right here. And then we go all the way down into our very last little term right here, our constant. We've got everything, so we don't have to put a zero in anywhere like we did on that last one. Now, again, bring down that three. So that's going to be the first number we'll write down in that space. Then two times three, of course, is six. When you add them up, you get negative one. Multiplying two times negative one, we get negative two. The sum of negative five and negative two is negative seven. When you multiply two times negative seven, you get negative 14. The sum of nine and negative 14 is negative five. But when you multiply two times negative five, this gives us negative 10. Ooh, when we add those guys up, we get a sum of zero. So the value, so again, remember our notation's gotta be good. So we would say P of two. So be careful there, because it's not F, now it's P. So P of two would have a value of zero, which tells me something else, which is really, really cool. Anytime, so it's gonna come into play later, when we're doing that synthetic substitution and we plug in a uh, value for x and we end up with zero right in this spot right here, that means that two is a zero. And x-intercept is solution to that polynomial function that we have given here, which also means if two is a zero, then that would mean x minus two would be a factor for that polynomial. So more on that coming later when we divide polynomials. Yes. So more on that later, but that's it for that example right there. Now we've got two other examples here, examples three and four. So I want you to go ahead and hit pause and then go ahead, come back and let's see how you did. All right, so let's go ahead and check out how we did here with number three. Now number three, man, tricky little spot right there. Don't forget, yes, we're gonna have to add in a placeholder because we are missing a third degree. So we don't have something to the third power, so we gotta put a zero in that space. And that is common for people to miss that. So be careful, take your time when you do that. And then of course, when you're done, we get a value of negative 12. And then sliding over to example four, same thing again. Try to see if you were paying attention there. We have a zero in there for the term. Cause if you look at all the terms from negative X to the fourth, all the way down to our constant of negative two, we are missing a squared term. So in that space, we gotta put a zero in which case we'll end up with a value of four. So f of three is four. So give yourself a pat on the back for getting all those four correct mundo. Now let's talk points. If you were doing this on a quiz, this is how we'd roll for it, right? So you would have, so that's, we can go back to this one right here. It doesn't matter which one. So you get one point right here for the setup. All right, you get one point for the setup and then you would get one point for all the numbers that are at the bottom, making sure they're all good. And then of course you have to write your answer f of two equals negative 34. So each one of these will be three points similar to that. And then on this one, of course, we'd have one point for the setup, one point here, and then one point for the p of two equals zero. And then our last two, the tricky ones here, we get a point for that first line, that third line, and then our answer there, and then a point, a point, and a point. So that's it for this. So that way, you know, you guys are pretty solid with that. So, by now, you should know how to and remember how to evaluate polynomials using this really cool technique called synthetic substitution. Much more simple for a lot of people than direct substitution, so I hope you found this video helpful, and I wish you the best day ever. All right, make it a great one, and I'll see my mathletes soon. Peace out, Cub Scout.